Well, it's not 2016. It's actually Just 2018. Jump right ahead. The big fella's back. You're not seeing things. Uh, Aram Talegian here with uh, James S. Garcega and Fred J. Robledo. 2018 football season upon us. Um, as usual, we will be breaking down uh, some of the biggest games of the week. And boys, we're going to start with a good one, a nice little crossover. Uh, Mir heading to Charter Oak to open the season week zero. Um, Jimmy, you want to kick it off? Yeah, Charter Oak, uh, much different team, Freddie, than we've kind of been seen in the past with so many athletes they've had. This year, they just look mortal. <laughs> they look mortal. They look wow. mortal. So, so vulnerable. Well, well, right? well, I mean, well, let's think about this for a second, James. Yeah. Last year, they had the, the great senior class. A yeah. lot of those guys are going to be playing on Saturdays this fall. Right. They, they get to the Division three semifinals in a game. To me, I was there. It was a game they should have beat Rancho Verde. Everything that could have gone wrong with injuries and everything went wrong for them. It was it was a brutal end. You fast forward to this year, you're right. They've got a lot of question marks. Um, not just on the players and the personnel coming back. You're talking about a revamped coaching staff, and that's going to be a big difference. Everyone, you know, over the years we've always talked about Charter Oak and that family coaching staff. Uh, and, and when you have that air over the years, those guys are back, everything sort of runs smooth. And everyone knows they're one of the most well-oiled, well-coached machines in the San Gabriel Valley. I mean, that's part of what makes them tick. But now Roger Lehigh, who a lot of people think is one of the, the greatest coaches in the San Gabriel Valley, who's never been a head coach, who was the defensive coordinator, is not back this year. Both Perrys, who have been uh, instrumental to what they do, they're over at Glendora now. Uh, and, 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 and there's more. There's more. So, you know, how is that going to change things up? With a young staff, um, it's going to be interesting to, to see. And I think this Muir game off the bat is going to be a telltale. Yeah, um, it, I, it's interesting. You know, you take Lou Ferrar out of the equation, and I think the average age on the coaching staff <laughs> with those guys leaving and what they have now coming in yeah. goes from about 45, 50 down to about 25 years yeah, old. Yeah, and right? some Dom Ferrar is suddenly an old man on that right, staff. Right, <laughs> right. So, I mean, get ready for a bunch of full beards and that whole look and, and, and shirts untucked. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, maybe that whole type of thing. Like It might look like a biker game. Yeah. You know, going into this rather than the, the clean cut Roger Lehigh, you know, Moose yeah. Evans, Perry type things. That should be interesting. But, Jimmy, you wrote about this this summer. These coaches, though, uh, they're familiar with the program. They're familiar with the drill. They're talented guys in their own right. And you could be looking at several guys that fast forward five, ten years down the line will be head coaches around the valley. True. And there's going to be some hurt burning. I mean, you have a new acclimation. Somewhat. Some hurt burn, I would think, just uh, because you're so <laughs> used. You're trying to figure out what a hurt burn is. Well, you know, but yeah. you know, you're but so used to seeing, you know, with Roger calling defense. You know, Evan Williams, who was an offensive like uh, lineman, you should remember him, Aaron, back in the day in the post. I think I seven. do. Yeah, he's now the new defensive coordinator and offensive line I remember Chris Allen. Yeah, Chris Allen is there as a wide receiver coach. Uh, AJ Powell is now back on the staff. Remember him? Yeah, and and, and, and let's remember, maybe it is time for that, that little coaching change. They haven't gone through it so long, and these are guys, this is what they do, that come up through their program. These guys have been on the lower levels. Maybe it is their turn. Maybe, you know, you know they, this is how they groom them over there. Maybe it's it's time and right for the next generation. But again, you look at this stuff, and I think this team starts with Joey Bustillo, uh, yes. Bustillo's at quarterback. Yes. Because he's the, he's the guy, you know, what they do at quarterback really determines a lot of how this offense is going to flow. And I think everything starts from there in that offensive line. And from what I've heard in camp and just briefly talking to Dom, they feel pretty good about it. I think they feel pretty good up front, too, Aaron. I mean, they always yeah. have good offensive and defensive and This lines. one's one of the better ones. Yeah. And, you can just and, tell and that's saying something considering they lost a couple good guys last year on the offensive line. But, yeah, these might be, you know, offensive and defensive line, two of the better yeah. ones in the area. And, and, and I mean, in a hard, it's hard for me to gauge. Again, I just talked to Dom Farrar, the son of Lou, uh, just yesterday, and he talked about the the passing scrimmage they had with Bishop Lamont. Mm -hmm. Said they played them pretty even, and, yeah. and there were some surprises in there yeah. for themselves watching that. Yeah. So maybe there won't be the drop off that we think there is. There will be some drop off. How far that drop off is uh, is what I'm curious about. Are they a team that can still compete in Division Three like they did last year? Right. We'll find that out towards the end of the year. The league is going to be great in the Hacienda. They oh. might not even be one of the league favorites, and we'll get into that in another show. No, I don't think they'll be one of the one league favorites. One of the favorites. league favorites? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, the league favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I think they are the league favorite. Yeah. Uh, we'll find uh, but this is, this is non-league, and this is, a, this is a program that hasn't lost a non-league game the last two seasons. Last non-league loss 
2015 to La Mirada. So let's get into picking yeah. it. Uh, well, let me mention you know. one thing to call a couple. Oh, sure. One thing about Muir real fast. Yes, they're a much improved team. Uh, Brian Love, who was uh, the Pasadena Star News first team all area baseball pick, he looked terrific. I thought when I saw him this summer. See the QB. QB, big arm. Understand this is second year now under under center in Muir's offense. And they just look like they have athletes. My biggest question has always been, Fred, and you should know this too, Eric, is how are they up front? I don't know how they're going to be up front, but they have athletes all over the place. They just they look really good when I saw them at the Aurora Tournament this past summer. Well, that'll be the test that they give Charter Oak in this yeah. spot is, is Charter Oak's athletes against their athletes. But if the line play is the mismatch that I think it's going to be, then it's not going to matter. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you mentioned Charter Oak's skill players. You know, Freddie, you kind of know this, you know, going back a few years, there's always that heir apparent, that Division One guy yeah. um, that's featured in the offense. It went from Zion Eccles, who passed the torch to Brian Castile, who passed the torch to Jermaine Braddock, who passed the torch to who? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know that yet. And, 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 and I'll be honest with you, there's, having been at the Star News, there's some love loss between these two schools oh. that go back a long way. Oh. I remember it might have been 10 years ago when Muir snuck into it as a wild card and, and Charter Oak was a Division One favorite, and, and Muir gave them a scare of their lifetime. Yeah, they had no business being on the field. Yeah, 22-21. Yeah, right? they almost knocked them they off. They went that for was, two at the end of the game. That was one of those Chris Allen coach yeah, teams. And Chris right. Allen is on the staff at Charter Oak this year, but that was one of those yeah. teams that went on to win a title. Um, and, and the reason is, you know, with Charter Oak, when you look at a lot of those players who were great, over the years in the past, a lot of them came from Pasadena, that yeah. pipeline. I remember that from, was the... Were yeah. from John Muir, and they remembered right. that over the years. And they don't play enough, but they, I, they're going to love a game like this to go to Charter Oak uh, and, and try to upset them. And I think if there's a chance for them to do it, it's always in these week zero games where teams are trying to figure themselves out. And sometimes teams with those athletes, sometimes teams who can just go out there and kind of wing it, have chances in games like this. No, um, I, I think it's going to be a great game. I really do. Jimmy wants to know the points. What's the point spread on this one? Point spread. Well, you know, if you're, yeah, that's a that's a tough. How do you do a point spread in, in, in week zero of a high school football game where these teams are off? Well, you've got Max Preps. I know. Well, you got I'm here. taking Charter Oak. You Look at right You got me here. I'm Freddy. taking Charter Oak by a touchdown. I think it's going to be a close game. I wouldn't be shocked at all if you beat him. I make CO a 14 point favorite. 14. That 14. doesn't mean I'm laying it. <laughs> that just means that <laughs> I would make him a 14 point favorite. Right. And I think, you know, some people would take Mir at those odds, some people would take CO. Um, I'm picking Charter Oak in this game. Uh, again, non-league, they haven't lost a game since 2015. The real test comes next week against Alameda. Yeah. And just another thing like about Mir, Jimmy, you know this, Freddie, you've seen this too. Mm -hmm. A lot of times Mir losses are not necessarily because of what the opponent did right, but what Mir did yeah. wrong. Yeah. And I think that in a week zero game, the more trustworthy yeah. side, even though there's a bunch of new faces yeah. both on the staff and on the field, <laughs> is Charter Oak. One of the key stats always, and my last thing is, in these mere openers is their penalty yardage. Free <laughs> yeah. snap. Free yeah. snap penalty. Yeah. Those, those are the ones you've got to keep an eye on. If, if, if they, they even get the play Yeah, everyone. if they can keep that penalty yardage under 50, they've got a really great shot. Right. But I, I say it could be over 100 easy. So if you're, covering, so if you're uh, going to the game Friday night, you had to Wait, 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 wait. wait. Where's your pick? I'm taking Charter Oak here as well. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm going to pick up the points. And, 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 and by the way, yeah, I'm, I'm and by the way we're, we're doing this a week before the game. Don't look for me next week. No. I'm going to be in Cabo San Lucas. I've got a vacation. These guys are gonna. These guys are gonna <laughs> run the ship Thank while you. I jump off, but I'll be back next yeah, week. That's, yeah, that's why I'm kind of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and by the way, we want to mention the big guy is back with the Saturday morning column this year. He'll yes. be doing it again. Steve Ramirez will be covering the game on Friday night. I think Keith Birmingham is going to probably do the photos for this one. So it's uh, Mirror at Charter Oak on Friday night. We uh, hope to see you there, and that's the first of our two-minute drills. Thank you.